Okay, so we've got the painting roughed in with all, all the local color. Now the next step is I want to start, you know, defining that form through shadow and highlights. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a layer up on top of all of my zebra layers. Remember, we've got a grass layer on, on there, but I want to, I'm going to put it under that grass layer and I'm going to set it to multiply. That's one of the composite methods. And so what, what that does, it's very cool. What that, what that enables me to do is create a color, create a layer that multiplies with the layer underneath. It's pretty neat. And that's a great way to add shadows. So what I'm doing is I just grabbed a nice, cool, neutral color and I'm literally just going to paint right over what we've got and start painting in the shadows. And that's what it literally does. It paints in the shadows. And what's very cool about it is because it's multiplying with the layer underneath, I'm not painting over everything, I'm adding to it. And so this is a great way to add shadow because everything will get darker in relation to everything else. So you can see as I paint, the, the stripes are getting darker and the light areas are getting darker, but they're not getting darker all the same. They're getting darker in relation to each other, which works really, really well. And, <clears throat> and as I'm sitting here painting this, I'm, I'm imagining, um, this is another thing, you know, when I was talking about painting, drawing and painting from life um, and building up that visual library that you might have, um, what what happened, you know, if when you draw and paint from life, you're not only you're going to see how to draw things, but you're also going to see how light falls on form. And that's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm imagining the light kind of over my right shoulder, like the like our, our creature is looking into the light. And so where where is that light going to hit? Where is the shadow going to hit? And so I know that along here, along that side of the jawline, it's going to go into shadow. Um, you know, this is where I'm going to have an opportunity to find some of the musculature in the body. You can see along the mane, along the top, I've put that into shadow. Here, I've, I've made the brush a little bit bigger so that, you know, right along the top of the, of the muscle on the neck right there, that's going to go into shadow a little bit because it's not getting hit with direct sunlight. It's that, you know, the, the, you know, along the, the, the top part of the neck and all that will be in direct sunlight. Now here, what I'm trying to do along the arm is I want to I want to start defining some of those muscles and where the arm connects to the body. And then here I'm going to define a little bit of the shadow and that latissimus muscle that I pointed out earlier. There we go. Now it's coming together nicely. You can see the shadow. I've got the shadow on the far side of the rear end of the, of the animal. And now I just want to hit some of the definition in the, in the uh, fur coming off on that mane. This is our chance. This is where we start pulling together some of the details. This is where it all starts to sing. There, now it's starting to come together really nicely. Now, once again, I want to emphasize, you know, we, you know when, we, when we start out, we start with a very rough sketch. You know, start from the very rough, the very broad, and you slowly work your way towards the end of the painting, towards the detailed. You know, try to, try to keep yourself from going too detailed too soon. That's, that's really important. So now I want to continue on. I've created a layer over the top of the clouds now, and I've set that to multiply. And now I want to start painting in a little bit darker areas. Even though we've painted in darker areas on the clouds, I want to just define them a little bit more and get everything to come together. And you can see by adding some of these darker shadows, it adds a little bit more variety to the clouds that I kind of like. And actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and add a, I'll add a little rainstorm in the background. That adds a little bit of drama. Uh, and, and reality to it. It'll feel kind of nice, I think. There we go. I'm going to hit that in there. That feels pretty good. Yeah, now that, now look at that. You know, it's, there we go. I'm going to hit that too. Now, so that's coming together pretty good. I'm, I'm really liking this. So I think, uh, let's go ahead and start adding some shadows. I'm going to go ahead and add some shadows down in the grass areas. Let's, let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab a just a little bit smaller brush and then just go ahead and start to paint right down. There we go. And just add just a little bit. Once again, it, it adds more definition. It starts to add detail. So now this is where this is where it gets really fun. I've added a new layer and now I'm setting it to overlay and I'm going to go ahead and grab a nice warm, brighter color. Now it's time to add some of the lights. And now watch, I'm going to, right where there's direct sunlight hitting, hitting our creature, I'm just going to start lightly 
very lightly, setting the opacity down, very lightly hitting where I think there should be light hitting directly on the zebra. And look at that. And once again, just like in the over, uh, the uh, multiply mode, uh, when everything gets darker together, in overlay mode, everything gets lighter at the same in relation to each other. So you can just paint right over the top and you lighten everything, but you lighten it in relationship to each other. So look at how the stripes lighten up, you know, compared to the light areas. And so you're really just, you're painting on light rather than, I like to think of it as painting on light rather than painting on pigment. And that's one of the cool things about being able to paint digitally like this is that um, I can literally paint light. And so I'm really, th once again, I'm thinking about the form um, I'm thinking about uh, how light falls and, you know, how it, it, there's, there's reflected light, there's bright, you know, there's the core of the light, there's the shadow. And that's where, I, you know, all of that really starts to come together and the form is really starting to hit. And also what I, what I do here is I like to jump back and forth between, at this stage, I like to jump back and forth between my shadow layer and my light layer. So now you can see I'm in the shadow layers now and I'm, I'm darkening up. I want to hit some of the, you know, like deep core shadow areas. Get those nice and dark and really broaden some of that range. And even add some markings like I'm doing here that you might find on a lion, uh, you know, out on, the, out on the plains there. But you can see it's almost going right into dark black. So now it's really starting to come together. I'm really liking that. If you look at the face, you can see we've got some nice detail happening. And right in here, all I'm doing now is I'm really going through and I'm just defining some of those, some of those darker areas. I want to get some of the creases where the, uh, where the skin bunches up, where the arms come together. That's what I'm doing in here. Um, you know, there's, it's going to cast a little bit of a shadow in there. So I'm just hitting that a little bit. And you can see I've added some muscle. Uh, in the arms, um, you know, it's all, it's, you can, it, the painting itself is really starting to come together. It's where it gets, you know, a lot of fun at this stage. Let's, I want to, I'm going to do a little bit of work on the clouds now too. So I'm going to add another layer, set that to overlay. And um, I want to brighten up a few spots up there. Just, you know, just like on our zebra, we should have some, you know, nice light hitting the clouds. So I'm going to grab a nice warm color there. I'm going to get my brush nice and big and let's just, I'm just going to go ahead and brush over and hit some light areas up in the clouds. And you can see it, it, it starts to really brighten it up, warm it up nicely. There we go. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Those clouds are starting to get some nice volume to them now. I'm starting to like that. I'll shrink that brush down a little bit and just just hit a few areas here and there, you know, and, and painting these clouds too. It's all about being, you know, you want to be controlled, but you also want to be somewhat spontaneous with it as well. So now I've, uh, I want to go ahead and hit some of those grasses with the same thing. I'm, I'm hitting, uh, got it set to overlay and I'm just hitting some nice, you know, light textured areas. Once again, just to play up, to increase some of that uh, that value structure, I want to get I want to increase that value range. I want to I'm increasing. You know, when we started out, it was all one value going across. You know, it was all the same color. And as we slowly work our way towards the end of the painting, we get more and more value change. That's feeling pretty good. Yeah, I think we're ready for our finishing details.